absolutely loaded slate at pitcher for tonight in MLB DFS. 14 games here on this slate and a lot of studs. When I go through the pitching preview and list out salaries, I want you to count the number of guys with salaries above 9,000 because it's roughly 40 or so. So we got options and I've got a couple I like more than the rest. So we'll break down who those guys are. But honestly, a slate where you can kind of play things the way you want. There are a lot of justifiable plays for tonight, which should be music to your ears. We're going to break down who I like most and more to get you ready for Friday night in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research here to break down Friday night's 14-game main slate. We're locked set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today and lucky us not only are there tons of pitchers there are no big weather notes for tonight there is only one game with a temperature above 85 degrees that is at Coors Field for the Blue Jays and the Rockies everything else is pretty normal not a lot of key rain spots for tonight so it's a pretty sweet slate across the board everything considered we're going to dive in and break down that slate here in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcast we were here every weekday talking mlb dfs we got select usc events the austin swain and in six days nfl heat check with myself and brandon gadula is back breaking down that week's nfl dfs main slate to get those as they are posted make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or spotify and also uh, we will have both the solo shot and the heat check but up on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV Plus on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku, and also at FanDuel.com slash watch. Get out your game day gear because college football is back, and FanDuel wants you to join in on the fun. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat bet for week one. Just place any week one college football bet, and you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. Bet on money lines, spreads, totals, and more. Just visit the FanDuel Sportsbook app and kick off the college football season with America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text the next step to 53342 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Indiana. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Wyoming and Kansas. 1-800-522-4700 in Kansas. KSGamblingHealth.com. Louisiana is one 800 777-770-STOP in Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In Massachusetts, hope is here, gamblinghelplinema.org, or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. And in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text hope and Y. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. We have got Tyler Glass now checking in with the highest salary of $11,400, followed by Max Scherzer at $11,000. Zach Wheeler is at $10,800 with Freddie Peralta at $10,600. We got Mitch Keller back up to $10,500, followed by Kode Senga at $10,400. Justin Verlander is $10,300 with Joe Ryan at $99. Logan Gilbert is $98 with Aori Perez at $96. Eduardo Rodriguez checks in at $95. Michael Waka at $94. Julio Urias, 93, Patrick Sandoval, 92, and Max Freed, $9,100, half the slate, 15 guys, more than half the slate, 15 pitchers with salaries above $9,000. James Paxson and Hunjin Ryu are the only other guys at $8,000 or higher. So a lot of ways you can go for tonight when filling out your lineups. And one of those ways could be Max Scherzer, and I like Max Scherzer a lot. Now he's facing the Twins for the second straight start. Last time out, though, Scherzer had double-digit strikeouts. So I hate that it's a repeat matchup, but I do still like Scherzer a bunch. And it wasn't just the strikeout total in that game that was good. Scherzer had a 13.9% swinging strike rate, which he'll take for sure. He went seven innings and threw 101 pitches. So they're letting him go deep in games, and he's pitching well. A lot of good signs there. And Scherzer broadly has pitched well with the Rangers. It's a five-start sample. He has a 3.24 skill interactive ERA with a 34% strikeout rate. And I think that number will come down 
because he wasn't quite that high earlier on this year. And I don't think that the shift to the Rangers will ignite a 34% strikeout rate, but he looks really good. And the Twins are a high strikeout team. Their active roster has a 28% strikeout rate against righties this year. So I do think the strikeouts will come down for Scherzer, both due to regression and because of the fact it's a repeat matchup, but he should still get plenty and there is enough here to be super high on Scherzer once again for today. So Scherzer's salary is $11,000. Totally okay with that. With that said, Max Scherzer may not be my top guy for tonight. I think that actually might be Freddie Peralta, who has a lot of similarities to Scherzer, where he's pitching great right now, facing a pretty solid offense, but not a low strikeout offense. So I've got high expectations for Peralta tonight. He's facing the Phillies, who have a 105 WRC plus against righties, but their strikeout rate is around average, so not a negative in that regard. And I think that that means we don't need to avoid pitchers who are facing them if they're the right pitcher. And Peralta is the right pitcher right now. Ten starts ago, Peralta started to lean more on his changeup. And it's not a huge pitch for him, but he did throw at a season high 23% of the time in his most recent start. And it's led to a big spike in strikeouts. Across those 10 starts, Peralta has a 39% strikeout rate with a 2.81 skill interactive ERA, a 2.97 ERA as well. He's done this while facing some tough offenses. He had 11 strikeouts against the Rangers on the road two starts ago, so he can shut down a good offense. This time he's at home. Peralta's strikeout rate at home is 34% versus 26% on the road. So I have super high expectations for Peralta tonight. He does not have as long of a track record of dominance as Max Scherzer does, but I still feel like I, I want to be here. So Peralta's salary checks in at $10,600. I think that's very fair. And honestly, I might wind up having him a hair above Scherzer for tonight, especially because Scherzer is in a repeat matchup. So Freddie Peralta, high, high, high on my list for tonight. As far as the value plays, I'm not really into anybody, if I'm being fully honest. Most of the really good options are in the 10,000 range. Some others are in the 9,000 range. You could go James Paxson at 88, but his velocity has been down. It's really hurt his strikeout totals. So if we're going to the value play, I want to save more salary than Paxson at 88 and dip way down. And I think our top value actually could be Tuki Toussaint at $7,000. Just know that I, I want to make clear I'm not necessarily in love with using Tucson, it's more so just because I need a value play, and there are 15 guys with salaries above 9,000. Tucson's face in Detroit, which does help. They have a 90 WRC plus against righties, 25% strikeout rate, and that's a good boost to opposing starters. Tucson has been up and down this year for sure. He's walking way too many guys, but he's still had some big games. Nine strikeouts for Tucson against both the Yankees and the Rangers. He hasn't duplicated that since, but... It is at least within his range of outcomes. If we look at the 11 appearances for Tucson since his pitch count got fully increased, he has a 22% strikeout rate, which is fine. And he could do well with that in this matchup. So again, you could go Paxton. We'll talk about him and things to watch later on, but I'd rather save even more salary and go for Tucson if I spend down at all, which is not a guarantee by any means. To me, it really does revolve around those top end pitchers for today, not just Peralta and Scherzer, but also plenty of other guys. Um, so to me, it's all about the studs for today. And then the value plays are more if you must. Now, the if you must factor does come into play because you do have a course field game for tonight and the Blue Jays are there. Now, you would think the Blue Jays would come with massive, massive salaries at Coors. But honestly, if you're going Peralta or Scherzer, I think you can stack the Jays and you should look to do so. They're facing Chris Flexen. Flexen has exceeded expectations so far this year with the Rockies, but I do still think we want to stack against him. Flexen up to six starts with Colorado. He has a 4.54 skill interactive ERA with a 20% strikeout rate, which is honestly not that bad, but he's still letting up a 43% hard hit rate, which is pretty rough. And the bullpen behind him is bad. So let's say hypothetically Flexen winds up pitching. Okay you could still get upside later in the game against this bullpen because they're not great and it's course field. The Blue Jays offense still has not fully clicked yet. They have a 104 WRC plus for the season against righties on the active roster. Maybe a trip to Coors can help get them back on track. I don't know. We'll see. But 
I think that the the Blue Jays do make a lot of sense for tonight. It does help that Flexen has reverse platoon splits. Righties have hit him super hard this year, which means I think they have extra incentive to go at Davis Schneider, uh, which is fun. You know, it's fun to get to use the new guy in the block. The sample on Schneider keeps expanding. He keeps hitting the daylight out of the baseball. He can also swipe a bag. Good numbers in AAA. I think that if you want to indulge and be high on Schneider, you get a good chance for tonight uh, because of the course field of factor, because his salary is 34. He fills second base, which is the worst position in baseball uh, for DFS. So I think that he makes a lot of sense. He's a guy I want to be on for tonight. Number two stack is going to be the Rays. They're facing Cal Quantrill, who is coming off the IL tonight. Before Quantrill got hurt, he was getting roasted on the mound. And his AAA rehab starts didn't look great. So I think the Rays are very much in play against him. If we look at Quantrill's final 10 starts before he hit the IL, he was using more curves and changeups, and in that time, just a 13% strikeout rate. And his bad at ball data wasn't as good as it has been in the past. Never been a high strikeout guy, but he's typically gotten good uh, hard contact numbers. But hard hit rate was 38% for him. That's not bad overall. It's about average, but it's also not good enough to overcome his low strikeout rates and teams punished Quantrill for this. He had a 6.66 ERA in this time. He let up five plus earned runs in each of his final four starts. You would hope that that was caused by the injury and that, that a trip to the IL would fix it, but he didn't light it up in his rehab starts either. He let up six earned runs in two out of his three starts in AAA. He did pitch pretty well in his final start where he went seven and third innings with six strikeouts, but I don't want to avoid Quantrill based just on that. So I'm very okay stacking the Rays against Quantrill for tonight. And similar to the Jays, honestly, the salaries in the Rays are not that bad, given the offense has lagged off a bit, and we can get a guy like Brandon Lau for a salary of $3,000. And I understand why Lau is here, because August has not been great for him. But still in just this month, or I guess it's not August anymore, but in the month of August, he had a 48% hard hit rate. He put the ball in the air plenty, I don't see anything super concerning in the underlying numbers for Lau, and I think that makes it a good buy low spot for him at that number of three thousand dollars. So Lau at three thousand, Brandon Lowe at thirty two, both guys who come with lower salaries than what they had throughout the rest of this year, and um, I think that we should take advantage of that one in this case. Luke, Luke Raley is also uh, his salary is down to twenty nine hundred dollars. Got the power, got some speed too. So I think we got good outlets for reasonable salaries on this race team right now. Finally, for our third stack, it is pretty warm in Kansas City relative to the rest of the slate. 84 degrees there, and that's the second warmest game on the slate behind Coors Field. The Red Sox are facing Jordan Lyles there, and I'm very okay with stacking them here. Lyles has done some things well recently. In 14 starts with fewer curveballs, he's letting up a 34% hard hit rate, which is a really good number. And that will often be tied into quality results because hard contact suppression matters. But in those starts, Lyle's ERA is 5.91. He let up seven earned runs last time out, including three home runs. He has now let up nine home runs across his past three starts alone. Now, two of those were on the road, whereas he is at home tonight. But in his most recent home start, he let up four home runs. He faced the Red Sox back on August 9th, and he lasted eight innings there. He did let up four in runs, and now they get a second crack at him. I think Lyles, when you combine him with a poor bullpen and good hitting weather in Kansas City, I think that gives the Red Sox enough juice to justify stacking them. So the Red Sox, to me, number three stack for tonight behind the Blue Jays and the Rays. Lyles used to be a guy with reverse platoon splits, but he's pretty even against righties and lefties this year. Both righties and lefties strike out. Very little. They put the ball in the air quite a bit. Lefties, slightly higher hard hit rate against him. So I'd give the lefties a slight edge. But overall, you can play things pretty straight up in stacking against Lyles uh, when choosing your Red Sox batters. Let's stick with that game and move to things to watch and talk about James Paxton. I mentioned before the velo has been down, and that's been happening now for his past nine starts. And in that nine start sample, Paxton's strikeout rate is 20%. He has a 4.69 skill interactive ERA, and that could perk back up tonight because he's a good pitcher, but and he's in a good matchup with the Royals as well. So if you saw something in Paxton's most recent start that draws you in, I'm not going to talk you out of him because if you gave me Paxton at full health in this matchup, I'd adore him. But 
not quite enough for me to be sold just yet. So I'm holding off. But if you like something in Paxton, I think that there's enough there to fire away. The last time out uh, was the best start that Carlos Rodon has had this year. He went four and a two thirds innings, but he had seven strikeouts there and he held the Rays to an 18% hard hit rate, which could mean that Rodon is turning a corner. And that's why the Astros were not in the top three for stacking for me. If I hadn't seen that start, I feel like I probably would have stacked the Astros because Rodon is letting up enough hard contact, a lot of fly balls, not getting enough strikeouts. But with that, that start factored in, I, I think that um, the Astros get knocked down. I would still give them a long look for stacking, though, in case Rodon regresses for, to what he had been doing before that most recent start. Finally, the Orioles are facing Zach Davies tonight. Davies looked good in his first start off the IL, but he was struggling before then, and it's not like he was lights out against the Reds in that start. He just pitched good. The Orioles can hit righties pretty well. Uh, roof will be closed in Arizona tonight, so that does knock down their park factor, but I think it does make sense to stack the Orioles against Zach Davies for tonight. Dinger calls for this Friday slate. The boring one, Josh Lowe. I mentioned before the salary is down to $3,300, and Lowe obviously is not quite on the same level of heater that he was on earlier on this year, but has started to pick things back up again. So I'm going to go with Josh Lowe as the boring home run call for today. The fun home run call actually has more home runs this year than Josh Lowe, so maybe I had um, these two flip, but... I want to go Tristan Casas. His salary is 29, so maybe it's just based on the salary that I'm viewing him as being the, the more fun option. But Casas seems like he's been a lot different batter the second half of the year versus what he was earlier on. He's putting the ball in play, hitting for power, facing Lyles for today in warm weather. I think that all adds up pretty well. So home run calls for today, regardless of who you want to put in which bucket, are going to be Josh Lowe and Tristan Casas. That's all that we have for today here on the Solo Shot. Quick scheduling announcement. We're still going to have the show here every weekday through NFL season, but Tom Vecchio is going to cover for me the rest of the way because i got to focus on NFL stuff. So make sure you follow Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1 to uh, check out Tom, get insights as the po podcasts go up each and every day. We will still have video versions both on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. So if you watch there, don't worry. Podcasts will still go there. Make sure you're subscribed to get our NFL podcast and our UFC podcast as well, all right here in the same podcast. But it has been a pleasure talking to all of you throughout this year, and I'm looking forward to doing it once again in 2024. Once again, do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Subscribe to FanDuel YouTube and check out FanDuel TV Plus as well. You can watch us alongside Up and Adams if you log in with your FanDuel account. Uh, and it's all the tremendous content over there at FanDuel TV and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups, not just tonight, but for the rest of the regular season. We'll talk to you once again in 2024. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.